Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and uh, today at uh, Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, we're going to be taking a look at some programming software for your UHF, VHF uh, type radios, handy talkies and mobile units uh, typically, uh, Bofangs and, and other brands. And uh, so we're going to take a look at Chirp, C-H-I-R-P. Uh, there's another uh, similar package from RT Systems. Uh, that one costs around $25, so it's not uh, too extravagant. But Chirp is free. And so we're going to take a look at Chirp. I tend to, uh, to use Chirp and uh, our uh, Elmer Don and, uh, and KY4BDP Brian uh, tend to use RT systems. They're, they're fairly similar. Uh, they're doing a fairly similar job, so they're going to be at least somewhat similar. But we're going to take a look today, and uh, what we're going to, to work with, I've got connected up with my programming cable, and you should see a, a screenshot of, uh, of the programming cable, the endpoints. And, and to me, that's where programming with any kind of software begins, whether your radio has some software, uh, your brand or not, and some of them do, and some of those are, are okay, and some of those uh, leave a little to be desired. Uh, I typically prefer Chirp for these kind of radios, uh, or, or even RT systems versus what uh, Bofang may provide, or some, some of the vendors sometimes provide. But it all starts with a good cable, uh, and so that's why I'm showing a picture of, of one of the cables I have. Uh, this was something that I sort of discovered when I first started looking into this. When I first got some of these radios uh, about a year and a half ago, is if you're going to have any particular level of frustration, it tends to be because of the cable. Get a good, decent cable uh, with a proper chip inside, and you tend to avoid all that. And I've never really had any trouble with any of the cables I've purchased. Now, they're going to be a little bit more expensive. You know, if you spend 3 or 4 or $5 on a quote-unquote programming cable, uh, you may get what you paid for, uh, which is not much. Uh, I think the cables that I get, um, either the handy talkies or the the, uh, the two mobiles that I have, the uh, UV25X4 that we did the video on, and this is an, a Talk Coupe, Talk Coupe KT8900D, and there's a lot of variations of that radio. Um, I don't know, fifteen dollars, less than twenty dollars. Um, not not free, not super inexpensive, but they've worked very well, and I've really had no problems doing the programming. So for my uh, my sanity, I think it's well worth the cost. So that's kind of where we I think we should start. And again, why I was showing the picture. Uh, so I've got that connected up uh, to this um, Talk Coupe KT8900D style radio. This is a dual band radio. Uh, but it, you know, it has those similarities with some of the Bofangs and some of the other Chinese radios. They, they tend to have fairly similar styled firmware and things like that. And right now, I, I kind of just blanked it out. I had a full program set on here, uh, but I blanked it out. And uh, so I just want to show a couple of things. We'll get into uh, to a little bit about how you can use the software. Uh, if we go under Help here in Chirp and go to About, uh, you can see they release a lot of ver versions of Chirp. Um, not necessarily every single day but what they call a daily release and you can always check the date you can see I have a fairly recent copy here it's a month old maybe and there may be a slightly newer one now um, I usually don't have much problem with it but I'll go and, re and refresh that every so often and you can see the address hopefully down here chirp.danplanet.com and uh, and they distribute this and there's forums and um, Mac version, uh, Windows version, I'm using the Windows version here, and uh, they can work with a lot of different radios. So you can go get it at chirp.danplanet.com there. So we have a good cable, uh, we've got the uh, the software. The second part is knowing uh, what kind of uh, radio reference uh, in Chirp you're going to need. Now if we go up here and take a look, so I have a menu option towards the upper left called radio and we go to download from radio because the first thing you would want to do even if it's a factory fresh radio is um, it's always a good idea to save out the current configuration 
and, and I would say, especially if it is factory fresh, uh, whatever the factory settings are in there, it never hurts to save that out and just have that available in case you need it. The files that this creates are not very big. They're, they're relatively small, basically text files. And so it doesn't hurt to save those out. And so uh, there's a couple things you'll need to do. Now, one of the things you'll, you'll need and want to do, and let me see if I can, can bring it in here and, and see if it'll get uh, picked up by the recording I'm making here. If you want to take a quick look at Device Manager, so I hope this is getting caught by the recording. I think I'm recording my entire screen, not just this application. Uh, so I brought up Device Manager, and I come down here to Ports, COM, and LPT, right, line printers. And you'll see that I have several COM ports that have been created from various applications and things. Uh, I've got a couple of programming cables uh, plugged in, I think, and a couple of things. And uh, this particular instance, I'm going to be using COM port 3. So you just have to figure out when you uh, plug in your cable what COM port gets created. You can take a look at this screen, then plug in your cable, and you'll see which COM port uh, pops in. So I know that I'm on COM port 3. So we go and we look that up. So COM port 3, then what we'll need to do uh, as you're getting started here is when you click on the vendor, you'll see there's a lot of choices. There's a lot of choices. A lot of the, the brands should be uh, somewhat familiar to us, Alinco or uh, BTEC or Bofang. You know, BTEC, the uh, U.S. distributor, uh, Anytone, uh, ICOM, Yesu is in here, Kenwood, Lushon, Lyshon, um, TYT, QYT. Um, again, lots of lots of brands you probably recognize. Quite a few of those. Uh, what you're not going to see is Talk Coop. Talk Coop is not a very big brand. It's just one of the many clones from some of the brands that are out there. But this radio which is sort of a clone of a KT8900D, if I go under Q, QYT, if I go under that brand, and then this third Dropbox line item, the model, you can see they have the 7900, the 8900, and a couple of variations, so the 8900D. So I can use that one for the program. It'll work with this radio. It's, it's uh, certainly similar enough. So you choose your COM port, your brand, and your radio, and they'll either have an exact match uh, like uh, if I look at the Bofang, the BTEC, uh, they've got the U UV25X4. Right, that, that one is, is popular enough and well-known enough that they've got a, a direct listing for that. So sometimes you'll find a direct listing, especially for the bigger brands. But uh, I happen to know with some research that the TalkCoop KT8900D will work with the KYT. Uh, KT8900. There's several radios, just several companies that made a version of that. They're all very similar. And so then we could download what's on the radio. Now I just sort of blanked this radio out, kind of wiped out all the settings I had. So it's it's empty like you see on the screen here. So we'll cancel that for now. But let's say uh, it's a brand new radio uh, or you're about to go on a trip and you want to load some repeaters on here. Um, in fact, uh, Brian and I do this pretty frequently when we travel for work is we'll, um, depending on where we're going, whether we're going to Virginia or Georgia or Illinois or, or uh, some of the regional areas that we go to and drive to, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go look at and find some repeaters and we'll drop them in here. That, and that way we can just kind of scan through those and find who's active as we're going through uh, those two or three states uh, to and from that location. Um, but whether you're going to do it for that use, and, and these programming uh, software applications make that very easy, or again, maybe it's just a brand new radio. Um, so let's go in here and take a look. So now what we want to do is go into radio and come down to import from data source. And there's a few options here. And you may some of these may require a uh, subscription. But I'm going to come down here to repeater book. We mentioned repeater book in, I think, one or two of our other videos on the, on the uh, repeaterbook.com. You can use it manually. But you can also use it through these programming uh, applications. So... Repeater book and come under repeater book political query. Political query is typically what I do. And it brings up this little uh, box that's going to set your kind of your search parameters. So let's just say uh, I want to do it uh, for the state of Kentucky. Um, you can pick your counties. So let's go to, uh, to Fayette County. Come up here. Just scroll up to Fayette County. And let's say I do want to look for 1.25 meter repeaters, right? My radio in, in my vehicle can do that. 
Uh, this particular one is just, just regular dual band, 2 meters, 70 centimeters. But we could run this search for 1.25 meters and see if it finds anything. No, no channels found. Now, there's actually one or two repeaters here, but they may not be on that list. But let's go back into repeater book. Let's just do uh, the more regular stuff. Let's look for 2 meter, regular 2 meter repeaters for Fayette County. And you see we have a few 2 meter repeaters. So we could grab these. You can see they're check marked. You can add, check, or uncheck the ones you want to grab. But you could grab all those and click OK, and it'll, it'll put them and start to build this list here that we can upload to the radio. So we could just click OK, and you see it added them into our list on the radio. And then we could go back to repeater book, political query. Now let's say I want to add in any 70 centimeter repeaters for the Fayette County area. Found a couple of those. So I could just add those to my list. All right? So I've got some 2 meters, some 70 centimeter repeaters. And so you can do that. You can build up your list very quickly and easily. Now, if we want to do a proximity query, uh, put in, say, your zip code uh, 50 miles and which band. Let's go back to, uh, to 2 meters. Actually, let's go, let's do, um, let's try 75 miles and let's try 1.25 meters. Okay, so I found a couple of uh, repeaters within 75 miles of where I am. Uh, or we could go back in there, again, look up, uh, you know, by that proximity, do the, the query repeater book. You could do proximity, um, let's do 65 miles, and let's look up just 2 meters. And this time it opened up a new page. Sometimes it'll, if there's enough, it'll open up sort of, it's kind of like Excel, there's a new kind of a page that opens up. So you can see it found quite a few 2 meter repeaters within 65 miles of, of my zip code. Uh, and, and you can pick and choose which ones of these. You can, you can click on these lines and you can highlight these and you could copy and paste those uh, over here. And you can build up a list very quickly. So whether you're traveling and you want to hit some of the counties you're going to go through when you're traveling or um, just kind of hit the states and randomly pull some out of the states and see if you, you get some. I usually, even when I do it that way, I usually get some repeaters I can use when I'm on that trip. Um, or just kind of build up your local area and pull in the, uh, you know, if you have a 6 meter radio, 10 meter radio, those are in there as well. Uh, or even the real small stuff like 23 centimeters and those things. So it's pretty easy to use and you can drop those in here and then we can upload this list once you built your list very quickly and easily back into the radio. And we'll show that here in just a minute. Uh, this other page right here, right now I'm just going to get rid of it. If it'll let me, uh, you know, let me get rid of that one. Since I'm recording on this, the, uh, the click inputs are a little bit different. Well, we'll just leave it alone. But that's how we can add repeaters into, uh, into the, the process here. Now, that's the memory sort of a tab here on the left. Let's go to the next one down. You see it says settings there. Oh, you can see I just clicked on settings. And with some of these programming applications, you can actually get to certain uh, aspects of your radio that you can't always program from the front button interface. And one of the things uh, that I've found for some of my radios is the welcome message. Usually you can't program this welcome message right off the radio itself. But uh, uh, here in Chirp, you can. You can, you know, welcome, put your uh, call number. In fact, that's my old uh, call sign. I'll just go ahead and update that. There's my new call sign and, uh, you know, my name and then the, the model number of the radio. And when you uh, now upload this back into the radio, that will be... The, uh, the welcome message when you first turn on the radio. So that's something you can program here. Um, something else I can think of that you can program. If you've got radios, like especially a lot of the handy talkies, but if you have a radio that can pick up regular FM, FM radio reception, uh, you can set what FM station you want to be the default when you turn on your radio, and then you can you know change frequencies from there. Uh, you typically have to do that from, from software like this or whatever software came with the radio. Um, you know, Bellfang has, has software. I, I think Chirp is, is overall better and easier to use. So there are some things you can do, and there are some advanced settings, and we're not going to go through all this because there can be quite a bit depending on your radio, and you want to be very careful with some of these advanced settings. You know, once you've spent some time and maybe researched 
what the setting would affect. And again, you've got your, your uh, maybe factory settings you can always fall back on. You've already saved those out. You might uh, play with a few little things, uh, the time of tail squelch or, or you know, some of the timers and things. Uh, you can set what the default frequencies are that your radio will uh, power up with. You know, so whenever you turn on the radio, it'll show you know, certain frequencies um, uh, on the channels. Uh, you can give names. If you want to have a label or a name for something and, and not just the frequency, you can give stuff a, a label or a name. So there's quite a bit in here. Again, I, I won't really go through all this because a lot of these advanced settings you'd want to be very careful with, and you typically won't touch most of these that often. But if you want to dig into it and dig into documentation, you might uh, come in here and hit some of these. It certainly makes it easy enough if you want to do that. So let's go back to the memories panel here for a second. So we saw that we can import right out of something like repeater book very quickly and easily, whole, whole batches of repeaters and things at a time. Uh, but you can still do things manually here. If, if there was a station I wanted to put in manually, uh, you can come into these fields, and when you click on them, uh, they become hot. Or if you need to make an adjustment to something you pulled off of repeater book, right? You know, if you needed to change the the uh, receiver transmit uh, tone squelch signals, or uh, whether it's a positive or negative offset or something like that, you can see the positive negative offsets here and what the offsets are. Uh, whether you're going to be transmitting at high power or low power, right? You can set that. And, and many of these settings you can do right on the radio itself. We, we showed that with uh, the last series of videos. But using software like this can help you program large numbers of repeaters very quickly and efficiently. And then we could then do an upload. We could then come up to Upload to Radio with this particular uh, set of, uh, of repeaters. Again, your COM port and your, uh, your model number, which should be the same as your download. And um, as you'll see on the, uh, the little video inset, uh, that I recorded, which is of the face of the radio itself, you can usually see the radio flickering when it's doing the upload, uh, and or you may see the word write. You know, it just depends on the radio and, and the firmware. But a lot of times you'll see the face, the LED, uh, LCD flicker, and uh, you may even see the word write. Whether you're doing that upload or download kind of shows you visually, you know, that activity is happening on the radio. So we'll do the upload. It just takes a few seconds. And once it's done, whenever you've downloaded or uploaded from the radio, the, the radio itself will reboot. And, um, you know, then, of course, you'll hear the, if you have a, a boot up tone, um, you'll hear that when it reboots. And then you're ready to go. So that's pretty much it with, uh, with software like Chirp. And, and RT Systems, I, I think uh, KY4BDP is going to do a, a quick video on RT Systems. It's, it's fairly simpler, simple be, or similar because you're doing some similar type of work. Um, as far as being able to grab from repeater book and, and do some of the same things we did here. So uh, that's pretty much it for this. Uh, the upload's pretty much complete. The radio's rebooting. I'll turn down the volume just so it doesn't scream at us. Uh, that's pretty much it, folks. Uh, I find it relatively easy to use. It's mainly about getting a good cable. You can struggle for hours if you have a bad cable, and you may never get it to work. Go ahead and spend the money on the cable, if not the software, and uh, again, Chirp is free, and, and RT Systems is uh, you know, around $25. And uh, you know, there's plenty of information online. Find out what uh, what radio you need to do, whether it's already in that list of supported radios. And they're adding new radios all the time. I know here in Chirp, and uh, and probably over in RT Systems as well. And once you find the radio to use, uh, find your uh, your COM port. And I, I really haven't had much trouble with this. Uh, you know, watched a couple of videos early on that were pretty informative and knew that I, I wanted to get a good cable. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle is in the cable initially and uh, making sure they understand what COM port and what radio to, uh, to choose, whether you can choose a, a version directly or you need to choose one that's pretty close. So that's pretty much it uh, for Chirp. You can dig into this as deep as you want to go with some of those advanced features. Just be a little bit careful with those in the, in the early days. Make sure you're doing some research on what uh, you might want to change and why. That's pretty much it. So that's it for me, Chris, KY4CKP. Uh, thank you for joining us here, Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, and 73.